All right. Um, this is to a different Eric. You are the next caller. Hey, Sabby. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Thanks for taking my call. I joined a little bit late, so I apologize. I didn't get a chance to hear everything. But I wanted to just talk a little bit about Ro Khanna and the Green Party uh, reps that were in CJ's uh, earlier summit meeting. But first with Ro Khanna, he definitely has, uh, at the beginning of his career, to most of us, he would have seen, to me, two years ago, I would have got behind him, really strongly behind him, because it seemed like the like a person that we could get behind. But then as time has gone on, especially even with this latest uh, revealing of himself with Max Blumenthal, mm -hmm. you can't help but say the guy completely is a fraud. And we have to stand behind that interview and we have to continue to use that as a, as a way to show w what he is. And we shouldn't let up on that because in, in doing what he did, he completely revealed what he's going to do if he gets more power, which is more of the same. So we cannot let, let him pass on that at all. Anything that he does from here on out, he's going to have to prove it back to us with actions and not words, meaning that if someone like him wants to win back us, people like you know that, that are watching your show, he cannot win us with just words. He has to win us with actions and policies that he actually gets through for us. Otherwise, we should not give him a pass at all. If that makes sense. Uh, and then second, uh, as far as the Green Party, the summit guys that were there today, I didn't know one of the, uh, this lady that was on the show, she indicated that they had won 100 seats. I don't know what type of seats, uh, I guess countrywide, but I was sad to hear that we were only finding out about this today. And I think even CJ indicated that he didn't know either. So it just goes to show us that if, these, if the Green Party has been doing something good, we don't know anything about that, you know, at all. And I actually went on their website today for both the California Green Party and the Washington State, and they had nothing about the summit. So I just don't think they're doing a good job strategically to market themselves, to position themselves, to promote, you know, the party, the brand, so to speak, so that more people, regular everyday folk. Well, can I ask you a question really quick, Eric? Shows that we're into. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. sorry. Um, why? Why do you think, because I, I've had that question for quite some time. You know, I, I've mentioned it to people that have come on here that have ran like third party, you know, campaigns before. Um, why are they not marketing themselves? Because that's the frustrating part to me. Why are they not getting their names out there? Do you think this is just a, a financial issue or do you feel that they just, this is the way that they've always done it and this is what they know? Well, I can answer it to you this way. Just being, uh, you know, I, I hear a lot of people sometimes when they get on these talks and they want to sound very smart. And, and the older that I'm getting <laughs> savvy, the more that I realize that in order to really make your point, you have to make it simple so that the people listening can understand it without, you know, too big words or just too fancy or, or just making yourself look big. I think the Green Party is not connected with us, the people that are actually energetic about doing something. Because I saw it today. They were talking to CJ and they were glad to talk to him, but they're not in our ecosystem. They somehow have missed becoming part of what's going on today with the left. And, you know, I don't know if that's, that could be just something that they have missed just by not acknowledging that we're here and we are not connecting with them. But somehow their leadership has to reach out to us, the people that are, you know, like RBN and other shows that are actually really energizing the ecosystem of the left so that they can become a part of it. 
because if they did, we could support them and they can support us, right? And then together, our message, our voices become stronger. Um, right now, we're not together with them. Even though we talk about them, they're not with us. I mean, I'm not saying they're against us, but they're just not part of what we're doing in this ecosystem uh, that we're sort of creating over the last, you know, maybe 18 to two years. It's really not that long. And so it's there for the taking, like I told you before. A lot of this is here for the taking, but, you know, obviously it's very, uh, it's very, I guess, very delicate what we have right now, meaning that somebody could come in and scoop up our energy if they had the right message, which RBN has, has and with the right people promoting it. So it's here for the taking. It's just we're kind of missing that opportunity, if that makes sense. Okay. Here's what I think is the problem. I think the reason why they may not be with us is because if you look at the past, let's go back to like the Bernie campaigns and all that fun stuff. I think the reason why they're not with us is because they have really not been, their, their campaigns have not been included in the left space. And what I mean by that is obviously, you know, mainstream media tries to smear like progressive candidates and left candidates as they're always going to do. They do the same thing to Green Party candidates. But what I notice is that even in left independent media, those candidates, those third party candidates were not brought onto those platforms. It, that is so odd to me. Like now I think yeah. back on it and I don't know why I didn't really pick up on this before. Mm -hmm. But why is it that people like Howie Hawkins, Jill Stein, and those are just on the federal level. But I'm talking about even some of the ones that ran for like Congress, that ran for Senate. Why were they not brought on to those left independent media shows? Why were their campaigns not presented? Why were they not even mentioned? So I think that the fact that both sides are pretty much shunned or smeared by mainstream media if anything left independent media should have taken them in because if you look at the platform that the green party had for 2020 the green party had more of a progressive platform than some of the progressive candidates that ran for office yes so it's just yes. it, that that is such a good point it's just like they're not given that attention they're not given that space and that's that's disappointing hopefully that will change you know I, I think you're hundred percent right. I think maybe we need to be self-aware of us, you know, the, the, the independent channels and the listeners that maybe we should have been asking for that to be a part of our, uh, what was happening a couple of years ago to include them into this. I think some of it could be that the legacy that the green party has as not, as a non winner, if, if that makes sense, that, that, they sort of, their moniker is, is not uh, equated with winning. And so while they're there as a third party, you don't, I don't want to say you, but in general, people don't see them as a winning option, if that makes sense. And maybe in the fact that, you know, many of the newer uh, channels, uh, you know, they're very energetic, very dynamic. Uh, the Green Party, while it had as you stated, the platform that really would have fitted into what we're trying to do, the mm -hmm. Green Party itself was not seen as a winning option. And, and you know, these were really new channels, all of them, except for a few, you know, Jimmy and, and maybe a few others that were a little bit older. And so there's some of that too, right? Because we're sort of growing and there's a learning curve. I mean, that's the other thing, you know, many of the channels today are going through a learning curve all right. the while, you know, fighting YouTube. So it's a lot of things sort of pulling at this and there's no centralized place where we can go other than YouTube as a platform. But, you know, even Jordan from uh, status scoop, who I don't agree with many times, uh, although I respect them, <laughs> but I don't agree with them a lot sometimes just on some of his takes. He has had that idea that you share, you know, that if all the channels had a place where we could go to, where they were collectively, you know, working together and it was more unified, maybe even that, because, you know, at work, for instance, like if you work in a, in a company and you have various departments, just by the mere fact that you interface with them a little bit, 
there's synergy that's created by, you know, those instances where you're working with them closely with them and you also gain other things, right? So if all these channels were in one place sort of working together, they would be much stronger. We don't have, have that. Uh, you know, in, in some ways we're sort of missing that, that, you know, unity among the channels, not that they're all mm -hmm. going to say the same thing, but unity in the sense that, and maybe unity is the wrong term. I, I'm not sure what term we want to give it, uh, but that would give us, and, and, you know, that would give a flagship for people to say, hey, that's, we could go over there. We can go and listen to this, this uh, network or this group of people. We currently don't have that. And so the way that we end up, you know, listening to Savvy is either through someone else, uh, maybe you, we see you in someone else's channel and then we kind of stumble, well, not stumble, but we find about you or others that way. So there's, there's a lot of things that are, you know, there that are not completely um, ironed out, I guess you could say. Uh, but in, its, in, in order to make them structure, you have to really think of these things strategically. And, and to be strategic, it takes planning. It, it takes experience, too, you know. And so, and that happens in the background. That's the, that's the kind of a work that happens in the background that people would have to do, uh, really think it through. You know, they don't have to be in front of the camera. Uh, when you're a strategic planner, you have to work behind the scenes and sort of command and drive where, you know, the ship is sort of going. Uh, and I, I'm not sure that we have that really. And so, but, but we need that, you know, because the other side has it, you know, the, the people that are making those decisions that make the mainstream media the way it is and that keeps the message unified. Those are people behind the background that are strategically, you know, pulling the gears and saying, don't talk about this, talk about this. Those people we never see, but, but I can assure you they're there behind the backgrounds, making a lot of money, and I'm not saying that we would have to have the people here on our side making a lot of money, but we would have to have people strategically thinking about this because that's part of a winning te team. You know, you have people in the front like Rome. I love Rome because he's out there. He's doing direct action. And he, he almost reminds me of Tupac sometimes. Yes. Uh, right? <laughs> right. And I love him for that, you know, but I, I can recognize I can never be Rome. That's not me. I could play another role. Well, we need other people behind the background, behind what Rome is doing to be strategic, to push them forward, but to, to support them. Uh, you know, I don't know if that makes sense, but that's that's where I think we need more of this strategic planning behind us. So, I hear you, man. Well said, well said. Sorry, I just got another text thing going on. Um, <laughs> I, I hear you. I, I totally hear where you're coming from. And I, I think you're right. Like, um, you know what? You know where people work together that I've noticed? If you notice all the people in on the right with independent media, yes. they work together. Yeah. Yes, they do. You notice that? They, they they fall in line with the same message. Yep. They literally they literally follow the same talking points and they will not falter. Like if they if once they know they have to talk to a point, they stick to it. And they just keep pounding on it, you know? Mm -hmm. We need to do, we need to kind of do some of that too. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. But, Eric, thanks but thank so you, much. Savvy. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Of, thank you. Have a good one. You too. I just want to say there's a lot of Eric's tonight, just like last time. 